This video is for those of you who may be considering switching over to Inkscape from Adobe Illustrator. The two applications are fundamentally the same for the most part, but there are some significant differences between them, and knowing what they are beforehand can help make this transition an easier process. So let's just jump right in with the layout overview. If you're already familiar with Illustrator's layout, then a lot of what you see here should look familiar as well. We have our system tools over here on the left-hand side. We have some system controls on the top, and then we have some more system controls on the right-hand side. The first major difference you will notice is down at the bottom of the screen where we have this color palette. This functions as a fill and stroke shortcut, kind of like how in Illustrator where you have this fill and stroke shortcut over here in the tools menu. We don't have this in Inkscape. Instead, we use this menu down here at the bottom left. So to show you what I mean, I'm gonna create a shape. And if I wanna apply a fill color to that shape, I can just click on one of these colors down here and a color will be applied. Now, if I want to remove the fill color, I can just click this red X over here, and then the fill color will be removed. If I want to add a stroke, all I have to do is hold Shift and click on one of these colors, and a stroke will be applied. If I want to remove the stroke, I just hold Shift and click on the X, and now the stroke is removed. And then down here, we have some more controls if you want to change the size of the stroke or the opacity of the object, or if you want to use a more specific color, you can open up your fill and stroke menu by clicking on this color stripe down here. And then the fill and stroke menu will open up over here in your dockable menus. And speaking of dockable menus, this is another difference between Inkscape and Illustrator. This menu over here can be collapsed at any time. If you want, you could just close this like a drawer like that. And if you want it again, you could just pop it back open like that. And then we can open up some more menus in here as well. So I'll come up here to where it says object and I will go to align and distribute. And now we have our Align and Distribute menu opened as well as our Fill and Stroke menu. And in here, now you can change some more of the attributes of your fills and strokes that you apply. So in Illustrator, there's something called Smart Guides, which allows you to align and snap objects directly on your canvas without having to use any kind of menu interface. In Inkscape, the equivalent of that would be the snapping menu. So if I come over here to the top right corner of the screen, you'll see this little magnet icon. If I click on that, now snapping is enabled, but we're not done yet. You'll want to expand the menu right here by clicking on this arrow icon, and you'll want to enable alignment as well. Make sure you have all three of these enabled if you want the Smart Guides equivalent. You could also go into advanced mode over here and you could change some of these more granular controls if you'd like, but I'm just gonna set things back to simple mode for this demonstration and I'm gonna make sure I have alignment enabled as well. And once that's enabled, you will now have Inkscape's equivalent of Smart Guides enabled. And if at any point you wanna go back and turn that off, you could just click this icon again or you can just use the keyboard shortcut, which is Shift and the number five. If you're a long-term user of Adobe Illustrator, then you're probably already familiar with all of the keyboard shortcuts. Inkscape's keyboard shortcuts are much different, so if you don't want to learn all of Inkscape's shortcuts, you can actually change Inkscape so that it mirrors Illustrator's keyboard shortcuts. To do that, we would just have to open up the Preferences menu. If you're using Windows, come up to the Edit menu and look for where it says Preferences. Or if you're on Mac, just come over here to Inkscape and choose Settings. And in this menu, we are looking for the interface section. You will have to click on this arrow right here to expand the menu, and then come down here to where it says keyboard. And then over here where it says keyboard file, you can click on this drop down right here and choose Adobe Illustrator from this list, and now Inkscape's keyboard shortcuts will match Illustrator's. Now let's go over some of the functional differences between Illustrator and Inkscape, starting with selecting objects. In Illustrator, if I want to select multiple objects, all I have to do is click and drag to draw a bounding box going over them, and as long as that bounding box touches those objects in some capacity, they will be selected when I release the click. Inkscape functions a little differently though. If I want to select multiple objects, I have to draw the bounding box going entirely over those objects in order to select them. Simply touching the objects with the bounding box will not select them like it does in Illustrator. Now, if you really miss that functionality and want to be able to touch objects to select them, all you have to do is use Lasso Select Mode. So you would hold down your Alt key or the Option key if you're on Mac, and then click and drag to draw a line going through those objects. And when you release the click, everything that you have touched will be selected. And when it comes to rotating objects in Adobe Illustrator, all I have to do is click on it to select it. And if I bring my cursor out here just outside of the scaling handle, it'll activate a rotation icon. And now I can click and drag to rotate the object. 
Inkscape functions a little differently. If I click on the object to select it, there will be no rotation handles. There's only scaling handles here. If I want to get rotation handles, I'll have to click on the object again, and now we have rotation handles to work with. And if I wanna get back to my scaling handles, I just click the object again, and now you can just keep clicking to cycle through those different transformation modes. And if you notice, we have this little crosshair in the center of the object. If I move this crosshair around, now the object will rotate around that point. And if at any point I want to reset the rotation center of the object, all I have to do is hold the shift key and click on that crosshair and it'll be placed back in the center. Now let's go over how you can duplicate objects. In Illustrator, you can duplicate an object by clicking and dragging it while holding the Alt key. And as long as you're holding the Alt key, you can make as many copies as you'd like. This functions a little different in Inkscape though. If I want to duplicate an object here, I have to click on it to select it and then press Ctrl D on the keyboard, or you can press Command D if you're using Mac. And once you do that, a new copy will be pasted in place on top of the original object and you can move it out of the way like that. Another thing that you can do is you can stamp copies of the object by pressing the spacebar while clicking and dragging on it. So to show you what I mean, if I click and drag this object and press the spacebar, a new copy will be created every time I press the spacebar. And the cool thing about this is that this can be used for rotating objects as well. So if I were to get my rotation handles and move my rotation center down here, I can rotate this around like this and then press the spacebar to stamp copies everywhere I want them to be, as you can see there. Another difference between Illustrator and Inkscape is when it comes to working with anchor points, which are known as nodes in Inkscape. In Illustrator, there's four different tools for working with anchor points. You have the direct selection tool, which allows you to click and drag on the individual anchor points. And then you have the add anchor points tool, which allows you to add anchor points. You have the delete anchor points tool, which allows you to remove them. And then you have the regular anchor points tool, which allows you to click and drag on the path to bend it. This is all accomplished using one single tool in Inkscape though. If you come over here to your Edit Paths by Nodes tool, you can do everything that those four tools do with this one tool. So if I wanna add a new node, I can just double click the path to add a new node. If I wanna delete a node, I can just select it and then press the delete key. And if I wanna bend the path, I can just click and drag on it like that and bend it as I like. So this is an area where Inkscape is actually a lot more convenient than Illustrator because it requires fewer tools. So in Illustrator, there's something called Live Corner Widgets, which allow you to round the corners of objects. With the Anchor Points tool enabled, if I click on an object here, you can see we have these round handles. If I select one of these anchor points, I can click and drag this handle to round the corner of that selection. To do this in Inkscape, you would use the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and then you would come up here to the Tool Settings menu and click on this button that says Add Corners LPE. And when you do that, you will now have these round handles on your path here, and you can click and drag those to round the corners of your objects, just like you do with live corner widgets in Illustrator. Another advantage you'll enjoy as an Inkscape user are the pen tool modes. So in Illustrator, you only have two different types of pen tools that you can work with. You have the regular pen tool, and then you have the curvature tool, which allows you to draw curved pads, as you can see there. In Inkscape, though, the pen tool has five different modes that you can work with. The first mode over here is just the regular pen tool mode, which you are probably already used to if you're an Illustrator user. It works the same exact way. And then over here we have the spiral path, which allows you to create curved lines in the same way that the curvature pen tool does. The only difference is that it creates contours that are more rounded and fluid. And then over here we have the B-spline setting, which allows you to draw curved lines as well, but by drawing straight lines that dictate where the curves go. And then over here we have the straight line segment mode, which allows you to draw only straight lines so that you don't accidentally click and drag and draw a curved line while drawing it. And then finally over here we have this mode, which allows you to draw lines that are automatically parallel to each other based on the first line that you drew like that. In Illustrator, there's something known as the width tool, which allows you to take a stroke and make it have a variable weight, as you can see me doing here. Inkscape doesn't have a width tool though, but it does have a path effect that will mimic the effect. So if I come back into Inkscape, I can select my path, and now I'm gonna open up the path effects menu by going to path and selecting path effects. From the menu, I'm gonna click on this dropdown, and I'm gonna choose the power stroke option. The power stroke path effect will mimic the effects of the width tool. 
So once I have that enabled, I'm going to grab my nodes tool and I'm gonna have these pink handles on my path here that I can click and drag to change the weight of the stroke just as I do with the width tool in Illustrator. And if you wanna change these properties even further, you can use this menu over here to toy around with these different settings. And then finally, there is the blend tool. Now there is no blend tool in Inkscape, but there are a couple of tools that when used in combination can mimic some of the effects. The first of which would be the scatter tool, which allows you to repeat an object along a path. The second would be the interpolate tool, which allows you to take two objects and make lots of copies between them. Now these tools are somewhat advanced, so I'm not going to go into them in this lesson, but I will put a link in the description of the video to a tutorial where I went over how to use them. And to finish off this video, I'd just like to mention some of the features that you'll be missing out on if you do switch over to Inkscape. The first of which would be the Appearance menu, which allows you to apply multiple strokes and multiple fill colors to a single object. You'll also be missing out on a 3D tool, which allows you to take flat 2D objects and make them into 3D shapes. And you'll also be missing out on all of the Graphs and Charts tools as well, which allows you to create pie charts and bar graphs by inputting numerical values. And then finally, you will not be able to output files with a CMYK color profile using Inkscape, although there are workarounds for this using Scribus and other converters. I'll have a link to that in the description of the video as well. If there's anything else that I missed, just leave a comment below and I'll see if I can help you out. As always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.